In this A-level, high-level IB chemistry video, we're going to be looking at electrophilic addition, so the mechanism behind this. Now, before we get going on the nuts and bolts of this, first of all, it's really important that we actually understand what both of these words mean, because that will actually help guide your answers in the exam. So first of all, let's ask ourselves what an electrophile is. Now, an electrophile is a species which is attracted to negativity or to a negative charge. And crucially, if we were to define it, we'd say that an electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. And notice, file means love, and electrons are negative. So it's something which loves negativity. So do remember that for me. Next up, the addition part of this. Now we met addition reactions at GCSE and IGCSE. Notice that, that there is only one product. So there's no byproducts. So if we were to show a simple equation, in the case of an addition reaction, A plus B would equal C. It would not equal C plus D. That would be incorrect. You just get one product when you're looking at an addition reaction. But what do you actually need in electrophilic addition? Well, notice that you need an alkene. And remember that alkenes are unsaturated, which means that they contain a carbon-carbon double bond. This is essential you must have an alkene and you must have a carbon-carbon double bond. The next point is that the electrophile is attracted to the carbon-carbon double bond and that's because that carbon-carbon double bond is an area of high electron density. And now we need to know what electrophiles will actually be attracted to that C double bond C and really we're mostly looking at halogens Key examples will include bromine and chlorine here, as well as hydrogen bromide. That will also come up. And the mechanisms involved for both are very similar, so don't worry. And now we can actually get going on looking at the mechanism. So we're going to look at the electrophilic addition mechanism of ethene and bromine. So let's start by drawing ethene. Remember, it has two carbon atoms and its molecular formula is C2H4. I've drawn out its structural formula here. And then bromine, remember, is a diatomic molecule, which is why we have to draw it like this. Now, the first thing to be aware of is that the electrons in the C double bond C, I'm just giving you some background. You don't need to learn this for your exam, but I want you to understand why the mechanism exists as it does. So the electrons in that C double bond C cause a repulsion in the bromine molecule and that leads to an induced dipole in the bromine molecule meaning that part of that bromine molecule becomes delta positive and part of it becomes delta negative so effectively it pushes electrons from one Br atom towards the other and that's why we can label one of these atoms as being delta positive and the other one as being delta negative now it's time to introduce the all-important curly arrows, and they must be curly arrows, and this is where you'll actually be scoring all your marks. So I've already said that the electrons in the C double bond C cause repulsion in the Br2. So let's show that. We'll show the formation of that induced dipole by drawing a curly arrow from the middle of that C double bond C going towards the slightly positive Br atom, and that this is going to push the electrons from one Br atom to the, towards the other, so from the slightly positive Br to the slightly negative one. So we'll show that again with another red curly arrow. So what does that actually mean for our species? So we're going to redraw that ethene, but it will be slightly different now, because effectively one of those Br atoms has joined. The rest of the ethene molecule remains the same and then effectively we're missing a bond with that second carbon so we've created what's known as a carbocation so it's a positively charged carbon atom and we must show that it's positively charged by adding that plus so I'm just making a little note on the right hand side that a carbocation has formed just double check your formulae well what's missing well one of the bromine atoms hasn't been accounted for now this will now exist as a Br minus and it has a lone pair because remember it gained electrons up here in this step. So the Br minus with the lone pair is effectively acting as a nucleophile and it can donate 
the lone pair of electrons. We're going to show it doing that with another curly arrow. And so what's our final product? Well, happily the two BRs are now joined onto the molecule. We complete the rest of the molecule. And really, if you look back, let's consider what we started off with. Well, we started with an ethene molecule and a bromine molecule, and we've produced a single product. So just to show you the summary, we started with ethene, we added bromine to it, and we formed this compound over here. So we formed a single product. We effectively added that bromine molecule to the ethene. And that's why we say that it's an addition reaction. And remember, we met this at GCSE. It's the test for an alkene or an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Remember, you were to add the alkene to bromine water and it turns from orange to colorless. And remember, it was an addition reaction. Let's just name the product. Notice that it contains two carbon atoms, so that's why it's eth. It's saturated, meaning that it has no double bonds, which is why it's ethane. You've added two bromine atoms, which is why you say dibromo. And then lastly, you have to label where those atoms have been added. So that was the first and second carbon atoms. So 1,2-dibromoethane is the name of the product. Just have a look again at that mechanism. The curly arrows are your essential parts here. Make sure you've got that lone pair labelled on that bromine together with your carbocation and then make sure you can accurately draw your final product. Let's now look at a second example again involving ethene but this time with hydrogen bromide. Again this will be an electrophilic addition reaction. I just want to show you how straightforward this is. So we've got our ethene again with our hydrogen bromide that electron rich area of the C double bond C. Now, hydrogen bromide, because there's a large difference in the electronegativity between the hydrogen and the bromine, has a more naturally occurring polarity than compared with that bromine molecule from the previous example. So it has a permanent dipole already, so I'm going to label it as being delta positive and delta negative. Don't worry too much. I mean, it looks exactly the same as the previous example. Next up, we add our curly arrows in exactly the same way as before. The hydrogen will add itself directly. It doesn't matter which carbon atom it adds itself onto. But remember, as with our previous example, we form that carbon cation. And remember, we have that bromine with the lone pair. And then the final step is to show the curly arrow of that lone pair being donated to that carbocation. But notice that our mechanism hasn't changed. It's very similar. So keep in mind where those arrows go from and to and draw them nice and accurately. So to show the final product, I've drawn it out over here. Let's name it. It contains two carbons, so it's eth. It's saturated, so that's why it's ethane. And then we have a bromo on the beginning. It doesn't matter if it was on the first or second carbon because effectively they're the same. So we've just got bromo ethane here. Now, sometimes they'll ask you to do an electrophilic addition reaction with an alkene, which is an ethene, something like propene, for example. Now, remember, the molecular formula of propene is C3H6. So to draw out its structural formula, remember, each carbon atom forms four bonds. Each hydrogen atom forms one. So make sure your bonds are in the right place. We have hydrogen bromide joining us in the reaction. So we see a similar situation as in our previous examples. So we need a curly arrow drawn here, a second curly arrow drawn here. Now notice that because you have that additional carbon atom, the hydrogen now has two places on the propene molecule where it can potentially join. It really does matter which carbon it joins to because it will create a different molecule. And I'm just going to show you what those two options could potentially be. So we have our carbocation, our hydrogen joining here, so we're just going to complete that molecule now. Whereas our second option looks like this. So instead, the hydrogen joins the first carbon atom, leaving the carbocation on the second carbon. So here's our second option. So let's just highlight the two positions of where the hydrogen could potentially join, either there or here. Now, in terms of knowing which of these two molecules forms, it's important that you understand that the carbocation intermediate stage, so what we're looking at here, the variation that will form will be the more stable form. 
But how do you know which variation is more stable? Well, it's important that you understand that stability comes from having as many alkyl groups as possible. And remember that an alkyl group is just something which contains carbon and hydrogen atoms only. So if we compare the two molecules, here you've just got one large alkyl group, whereas if you look at the second example, we have an alkyl group there and a second one here. So arguably the second example is more stable. So notice that because this second molecule has two alkyl groups attached to that carbocation, we say that it is a secondary carbocation, that too indicating that there are two alkyl groups attached, which means that it is more stable and it will be preferentially produced in the reaction. And so because we know which version now that we're working with, we can carry on with our reaction. So I'm going to take that second version. Remember, we have a bromine with a lone pair, which it will donate to that carbocation. And therefore, the major product will look like this. You need to add that bromine. And so here's your final product. And because it's an addition reaction, there are no other products produced. Let's name it now. So we have three carbons in a row, which means we're looking at propane because it's saturated. It contains a bromine atom, so that means bromo. And we need to state where that bromine is attached, so it's on the second carbon. So it's 2-bromopropane. And this would be our major product. Notice that some reactions will occur which produce the second molecule I was talking about, so I'll draw that out here. So naming that, again we have propane, but this time the bromine atom is on the first carbon atom. So it's one bromopropane, which is the minor product. In our final example, we're going to be looking at the electrophilic addition reaction between ethene and sulfuric acid. Remember, sulfuric acid has a molecular formula of H2SO4. So starting with ethene, C2H4. Now, it's quite important that you draw out the structure of H2SO4 in a way that means that you can accurately show what's going on in the mechanism. So you must learn this structure so it looks like this. It's a symmetrical structure. Notice that there's a large difference in electronegativity between the hydrogen and the oxygen, which means you end up with a delta positive on the hydrogen and a delta negative on the oxygen. So using our curly arrows again, this is what we need to draw. Looking now at our intermediate stage, we have our carbocation, exactly as before, with that hydrogen from the H2SO4 joining onto the ethene. Looking at our lone pair species, this is going to be slightly more difficult to draw compared with our previous examples. Nice and methodical here, draw it nice and carefully. There's the all-important lone pair, and so you see this scenario. And then looking at the final result, let's redraw that molecule. The carbocation no longer exists, and this is what you have left over. So make sure you have the right number of atoms of each element present. And then naming the final product, slightly more complicated than before. Notice that we have an ethyl group here, which is why its name is ethyl hydrogen sulfate.